purifier is a high precision instrument. When overhauling the purifier or replacing its parts, be sure to use genuine parts only. Using non-genuine parts may degrade the long-term performance of the purifier, cause damage to the self-junctor, or compromise human safety. Genuine Mitsubishi vertical shaft and horizontal shaft parts are stamped using a laser marker with the Mitsubishi logo, model number, and part number. This video presentation explains how to maintain and overhaul the bowl opening and closing mechanism and other machinery of the Mitsubishi self ejector G-Series and how to assemble and disassemble the self ejector's vertical shaft, upper bearing housing, horizontal shaft, and gear pump. Before starting the assembly and disassembly processes, read the user's manual carefully including inspection points and inspection methods so that you can perform all procedures reliably and efficiently. Before starting disassembly, use a safety joint or motor fan to make sure that all equipment is completely stopped. Perform disassembly in the following order. First, remove the sludge cover, then release the horizontal shaft, and then release the vertical shaft Let's look at the sludge discharge process using an actual example of total discharge. In this example, all of the sludge inside the bowl is discharged from the sludge discharge holes. In automatic operation, at preset sludge discharge intervals, the supply of dirty oil is stopped and the replacement water is supplied to the separation chamber, thus collecting the oil in the bowl. Next, operating water is supplied to the water pressure room. Once the chamber is filled, centrifugal force is applied to generate hydraulic pressure in the operating water. When this hydraulic pressure exceeds the centrifugal force in the hydraulic valve, the pilot valves move inward. As you can see, the operating water in the valve opening chamber is then discharged from the bowl. When the operating water in the valve opening chamber is discharged, the hydraulic pressure inside the separation chamber causes the valve cylinder to slide downward. The dropping of the valve cylinder causes the sludge discharge outlet to open and all sludge and liquids are immediately discharged from the separation chamber. When discharge ends, the supply of valve opening water stops. All of the valve opening water is released through the drain nozzles. With the hydraulic pressure from the valve opening water removed, the pilot valves once again move outside. The supply of the valve opening water, which had been stopped during sludge discharge, is now resumed. When the bowl is filled with the valve opening water, hydraulic pressure is generated pushing the valve cylinder upward to shut the discharge outlet. Sealing water is supplied into the separation chamber and dirty oil operation begins. We will explain the procedure for disassembling and assembling the bowl, which is the heart of the Mitsubishi self ejector G-Series. Disconnect the connecting pipes. Your connecting pipes may be different depending on supplier specifications. Remove the plug to release the oil from the piping. 
Using a hook snapper, remove the cap nuts from the dirty oil inlet, heavy liquid water inlet, and light liquid outlet pipes. Loosen the lower cap nuts, turning all of the piping in a horizontal direction. If the outlet pipe is equipped with a pressure sensor, be careful of the electrical wiring when performing this operation. The inlet pipe is equipped with an orifice for flow measurement. Take care not to lose this device. Loosen and remove the cover nuts using a wrench. Remove the hexagonal nut that retains the inlet pipe. Loosen the socket set screws in the upper hood. Tap the top of the inlet pipe with a plastic hammer to release the contact of the tapered part. Loosen the socket cap screw fastened to the sludge cover, mount the lifting jack onto the thread of the upper hood, and slowly lift the sludge cover using the chain block. This completes disassembly of the sludge cover. To disassemble the bowl, use the following procedure. Loosen the disc nuts using the disc nut handle. Remove the disc nuts. Remove the heavy liquid chamber, followed by the heavy liquid impeller, Teflon packing, and gravity disc. At this point, you may wish to replace the gravity disc. Remove the light liquid chamber using the light liquid chamber handle. When the light liquid impeller and inlet pipe are removed, disassembly of the top of the bowl is complete. Remove the bowl. First, insert the cap nut spanner in the bowl and screw the release bolts into the threads on the heads of the cap nuts. Next, loosen and remove the cap nuts using the cap nut spanner. Mount the bowl lifting jack onto the guide tubes on the thread. Tighten the bowl lifting jack. The bowl will separate from the vertical shaft and float up. The reason for releasing and disassembling the bowl is to prevent the application of excessive force on the bearings of fast rotating equipment. If the bowl does not float up when the bowl lifting jack is tightened, set the pipe in the handle and tighten it. This jacking effect causes the bowl to float up. 
After the bowl floats up, slowly lift it up to remove it from the self-jector. After removing the bowl from the self-jector, place it on the disassembly stand. Be sure to align the four pins on the disassembly stand with the grooves on the bottom of the bowl. After setting the bowl, remove the bowl lifting jack and set the disc clamp plate. Screw the push bolts of the disc clamp plate into the guide tubes and firmly tighten the hexagonal nuts with the hammer, like this. This procedure is important. Its purpose is to dampen the springing effect in the disc mounted on the bowl to protect the thread of the bowl nuts and make it easier to release the bowl nut. After fastening the bowl nut handle to the bowl nut using the socket cap screw, tap it with the hammer to remove it. Remove the bowl nut. Remove the disc clamp plate. Set the patch on the distributor, then set the push bolt, handle, bowl head jack and disc nut. Gradually tighten the handle to remove the bowl head. The bottom of the bowl head is fitted with a main seal ring. Be careful not to damage the seal. Mount the bowl lifting jack on the guide tube and remove the distributor with the top disc and discs still mounted. Remove the bowl lifting jack and remove the top disc and discs from the distributor. Do not use metal or sandpaper to clean the removed discs. Scratches on the surface can cause sludge to accumulate on the surface more quickly. Instead, soak the discs in plenty of cleaning oil or detergent. When the sludge has softened, clean with a soft utensil such as a bamboo or plastic spatula or sponge. Remove the main cylinder. Set the push bolt and handle onto the bowl head jack.
Set the patch onto the mounting sections of the cap nut on the bowl body and fasten the main cylinder onto the bowl head jack using the four socket cap screw. The main cylinder can be easily removed by screwing it in while loosening the push bolt handle. This simultaneous loosening and tightening makes it easy to remove the main cylinder in the vertical position. Take care not to damage the main cylinder sheets and sliding parts when handling them. The process described so far is the routine disassembly process. However, if the main cylinder does not open and close correctly, you will need to inspect and clean the pilot valves at this point. This is the procedure for disassembling the pilot valves. First, we will describe how to remove the two pilot valves from the sides of the bowl body. Remove the valve nut using a hexagonal wrench. Screw the valve jack bolts into the pilot valves and gradually tighten the butterfly nuts to release the pilot valves. Take care not to damage the nylon valve sheets mounted on the valve guides or the sheets on the pilot valves. After removing the valve jacks, remove the pilot valves and valve sheets from the valve guides. Inspect each O-ring for hardening and damage. Clean and, if necessary, replace the O-rings. When removing the O-rings from the valve guides, take care not to damage the inner surfaces. When cleaning the insertion parts of the pilot valves, do not use metal utensils or rough sandpaper to clean these parts. Take care not to damage the inner surfaces of the O-rings. Such damage can cause the seals of the O-rings to deteriorate, obstructing the opening and closing of the valves. Be sure to clean using a soft cloth. This is the procedure for cleaning the main seal ring. Heat the tip of the packing remover and melt off the packing like this. Take care not to damage the main seal ring grooves. Before mounting the main seal ring, clean the grooves thoroughly. Align the main seal ring with the grooves and gently insert it into the grooves. Use a wooden panel or the like to ensure that the main seal ring is fully driven in and mounted. Do not strike the main seal ring directly with a plastic hammer or the like, as this can damage the main seal ring, causing a defective seal.
This completes the mounting of the main seal ring. Disassembly of the bowl is now complete, except for the drain nozzles. Inspect and clean all of the disassembled parts and replace packing and O-rings as necessary. When you have finished cleaning, inspecting and replacing parts, assemble the bowl. Clean the inspection parts of the pilot valves. Lubricate the insertion parts and O-rings of the pilot valves and insert them while lightly pressing on the pilot valves. Take care not to press with excessive force, as this may damage the pilot valve's O-rings. Tighten the valve nuts firmly. This is the procedure for mounting the main cylinder. Lubricate the O-rings and mount them on the main cylinder so that they cannot twist. Set the bowl head jack push bolt and handle onto the valve cylinders. Fully lubricate the sliding parts on the bowl body and valve cylinder and set the patches. Gradually loosen the jack handle to align the zero mark on the main cylinder and the bowl body and notch position. Remove the bowl head jack and patch. Finally, turn the cylinder and confirm that mounting is complete. Mount the distributor to the disc. There are two types of discs. We will start with a large diameter disc. Parts may be mounted on the distributor in any order. Align the parts with the keys on the distributor and press firmly to mount them. After mounting the large diameter disc, mount the small diameter disc. The number of small diameter discs differs according to the model. Be careful to mount the small diameter disc so that the top disc does not touch the flanges of the disc. If a large diameter disc is mounted at the top so that the surface of the top disc touches the flange of a disc, the bowl may not tighten correctly and the disc may be damaged. Some looseness in the disc may occur over time from repeated use. If this occurs, add more discs. Screw the bowl lifting jack into the distributor and mount it on the bowl body. Align the notch pins on the distributor with the notch grooves on the bowl body.
Remove the bowl lifting jack. As with the disc, align the top disc with the keys on the distributor. Check that the O-ring is installed on the top disc. Check that the O-ring is mounted on the bowl head. Mount the bowl head. Align the grooves on the bowl head with the notches on the bowl body for mounting. The zero mark of each notch position is indicated above the notch. Screw the disc clamp plate into the distributor and tighten the nut with a wrench to compress the disc. Compressing the disc is an important procedure. Its purpose is to dampen the springing effect in the disc mounted on the bowl to protect the thread of the bowl nut and make it easier to tighten the bowl nut. Mount the bowl nut. Apply anti-lock lubricant to the thread of the bowl nut and of the bowl body. Use the bowl nut handle to mount the bowl nut on the bowl body. Check the positions of the zero marks on the bowl nut and bowl body. Tighten the bowl nut so that the zero marks on the bowl nut and bowl body are within 10 to 15 millimeters of each other. You should be able to align the zero marks within 10 to 15 millimeters simply by tightening the bowl nut firmly. With the zero marks within 10 to 15 millimeters of each other, Fasten the bolts to the bowl nut handle and align the zero marks completely using a hammer. Tighten until the zero marks are completely aligned. Remove the bowl nut handle. This completes the assembly of the bowl. We will now explain the procedure for mounting the bowl on the self-jector. Before mounting the bowl on the self-jector, remove the disc clamp plate. Set the bowl lifting jack on top of the bowl head and lift. With the bowl lifted up, inspect the two drain nozzles mounted on the bottom of the bowl. The slits on the drain nozzles are 0.9 millimeters wide on the small and medium sized models and 1.1 millimeter wide on the large models. Remove the drain nozzles and check for clogging. If the drain nozzles are clogged, Clean them thoroughly with an air gun. After cleaning, mount the drain nozzles on the bowl. Place the bowl on the self-jector. Before mounting the bowl, apply lubricant to the O-rings of the water supply device. 
set the self-jector bushing on the vertical shaft. Slowly lower the bowl to mount it firmly on the vertical shaft. Remove the bowl lifting jack. Be sure to mount the cap nut to fasten the bowl firmly to the vertical shaft. After you fasten the bowl, confirm that the O-rings are mounted on the inlet pipes and light liquid impeller on the top of the bowl head and that the bowl is fastened firmly. At this point, apply lubricant to the O-rings to ensure smooth assembly. Firmly fasten the light liquid chamber to the threads of the top disc using the light liquid chamber handle. At this point, Check that the light liquid chamber is firmly tightened by confirming that the zero marks on the light liquid chamber and bowl head are aligned. Mount the gravity disc, followed by the Teflon packing and then the heavy liquid impeller. Mount the heavy liquid chamber. Mount it so that the zero mark aligns with the zero mark on the bowl body. If the zero marks are not aligned, shaking may result. Be sure to apply anti-lock lubricant to the thread of the disc nut and bowl before mounting the disc nut. Tap the disc nut handle with a hammer to tighten the disc nut completely. This completes the mounting of the bowl. We will now explain the procedure for mounting the sludge cover. Check that the O-rings are mounted on the sludge cover and mount the sludge cover using the lifting jack. Two O-rings are mounted inside the sludge cover. When mounting the sludge cover, slowly lower it vertically to prevent damaging the O-rings. Mount the four socket cap screws. Temporarily fasten the socket set screw into the groove in the water inlet pipe. Do not tighten this screw completely. Mount the nut on the inlet pipes. When mounting the nut, mind the zero marks on the nut and upper hood. Depending on the screw, the angle of the zero marks on the nut to that on the upper hood is not a problem if it is 180 degrees or less, depending on progress. However, if the angle is over 180 degrees, you will need to replace the light liquid impeller. Take care not to tighten the hexagonal nuts any more than necessary. Excessive tightening can cause deformation of the impeller. Fasten the socket set screws and mount the cover nuts. Check that the orifice for regulating flow in the inlet pipe is mounted. Mount the cap nuts on the inlet pipe, inlet pipe and light liquid inlet pipe. Mount the packing on the cap nuts of each of the various connecting pipes.
tighten the connecting pipes firmly using a hook spanner. Finally, connect the water piping. The specifications of the water piping may differ, so please handle the connection procedure accordingly. This completes all assembly processes. Assembly of your Mitsubishi Self-Jector G-Series is complete. This is the procedure for removing the horizontal shaft. Remove the drain plug and release the lubricant from inside the gear case. Remove the gear case cover. Disconnect the motor. If the electrical connections are incorrect when you perform assembly, the motor may run in reverse. Be sure to make a note of the correct connection numbers. Set the chain block on the motor and remove the four bolts to remove the motor. Next, remove the connecting tubes from the gear pump. Using a hexagonal rod spanner, remove the four bolts that fasten the gear pump to loosen and remove the gear pump. Using the hexagonal rod spanner again, loosen the screw with the safety joint attached and remove the screw and safety joint together. Remove the two bolts fastening the bearing retainer. Remove the four bolts fastening the large bearing housing. Screw the push bolts into the two push bolt grooves on the large bearing housing. Remove the large bearing housing. Remove the friction pulley mounted on the motor. Set the lock washers to prevent turning, then loosen the bearing nuts and remove the bearing nuts and lock washers. Set the disassembly jack, push bolts and hexagonal bolts in the friction pulley and shut the handle. Release the horizontal shaft from the friction pulley. Release the entire horizontal shaft from the gear pump. At this point, if the horizontal shaft is difficult to release by hand, place a wooden slat or similar item next to the friction pulley and gently tap the horizontal shaft. The horizontal shaft should release easily.
When tapping, be sure to press in the opposite direction with your hand. If the horizontal shaft drops onto the spiral gear, damage may occur. This completes the release of the horizontal shaft. This is the procedure for removing the water supplying device. Set the disassembly jack, push bolts and hexagonal bolts on the bowl bushing jack. Gradually tighten the handle to release the bowl bushing jack. Remove the cap nuts from the operating water inlet pipe of the water supplying device. The water supplying device is essential equipment to ensure that the main cylinder operates correctly. If the water slits become occluded with fur, the required operating water may not be supplied to the hydraulic chambers in the bowl, causing failures in emission and closing pressure. Occurrence of dirt in the water supplying device varies according to the quality of the water. Inspect and clean the water supplying device before fur can form. If the slits become clogged because fur forms on the water supplying device, clean the operating water line with a straightener. If operating water is supplied to the tank, clean the tank as well. Tighten the socket set screw on the chamber cover and remove the three socket cap screws fastened to the operating water disc. Set the disassembly jack, push bolt, hexagonal bolt and handle on top of the vertical shaft. Tighten the handle to remove the water supplying device. At this point, if the water supplying device cannot be removed simply by tightening the handle, tap the center of the push bolts to be released easily. This completes the release of the water supplying device. This is the procedure for removing the vertical shaft from the self-jector. Remove upper bearing cap one. Remove the misc cover. Using a T-wrench, loosen and remove the three bolts that fasten the upper bearing cover. Remove in order the upper bearing cover, upper bearing cap 2, panel springs, spacers. For self-jector models SJ50G and larger, mount the vertical shaft lifting jack on the screws at the top of the vertical shaft and lift using the chain block to release the vertical shaft. Remove the upper bearing housing. Remove the steel ball, lower spring bearing, lower spring and spring seat from the lower bearing housing. This completes the release of each part of the self-jector.
Let's now take a look at the procedures for disassembling and assembling the removed water supplying device, vertical shaft, upper bearing housing, horizontal shaft, and gear pump removed from the self-jector. This is the procedure for disassembling the water supplying device. Raise the claws of the tongued washers on the four bolts that fasten the chamber cover. Next, loosen the four bolts and remove them along with the tongued washers. Remove the chamber cover. Loosen the three socket cap screws under the operating water disc to disassemble the operating water chamber, operating water nozzle, operating water disc and packing. This completes the disassembly of the water supplying device. Clean and inspect the parts and replace parts as necessary. This is the procedure for assembling the water supplying device. The order for assembly follows the order for disassembly in reverse. Set the packing in the operating water disc and mount the operating water chamber on the operating water nozzle. The bolt holes on the operating water nozzle, packing and operating water disc are arranged in an isosceles triangle. Align the parts correctly with the bolt holes before mounting the parts. Mount the chamber cover. Gently bend the claws of the tongued washers, then set the bolts and tighten them firmly. This completes the assembly of the water supplying device. This is the procedure for disassembling the vertical shaft. Fasten the vertical shaft in a vise. Screw the push bolts into the bolt holes on the angular bearing case to remove the angular bearing case. Set the vertical shaft jack, disassembly jack handle, and push bolts. Tighten the handle to simultaneously release the angular ball bearings, collars, roller bearings, and lower bearing cover. Remove the outer rims of the roller bearings while still mounted on the lower bearing case using a chisel.
Turn the vertical shaft counterclockwise to release the upper bearings. To prevent damage to the upper bearing case, release it by tapping with a plastic hammer. While raising the washers, loosen the bearing nuts using a hook spanner and remove the bearing nuts and washers. Once again, turn the vertical shaft counterclockwise. Taking care not to damage the vertical shaft, tap the inner rim of the bearing with a chisel to release the bearing. This completes the disassembly of the vertical shaft. This is the procedure for assembling the vertical shaft. Clean and inspect the parts and replace parts as necessary. Mount the bearings on the vertical shaft. Before setting the outer rims of the roller bearings, push the lower bearing case in, like this. All bearings are shrink fit. At this point, Heat the bearings of the horizontal shaft as well. Heat to about 95 degrees centigrade. When the bearings are hot, set the vertical shaft in a vise. Then mount only the inner rims of the lower bearing cover roller bearings. If the bearings do not insert smoothly, tap them with a chisel. Next, mount the lower bearing cover that is set on the outer rims of the roller bearings. Insert the collars and mount the angular ball bearings. Ensure that the angular ball bearings are correctly aligned top and bottom. If the bearings do not insert smoothly, tap them with a chisel. Tap the inner rims of the angular ball bearings with a chisel, then check that the two bearings are completely mounted using the lower bearing cover. If the lower bearing cover can be turned by hand, tap it lightly with the chisel again to mount it firmly. Set the spacers and tap the angular bearing case uniformly with a plastic hammer. At this point, firmly align the angular bearing case with the key in the lower bearing case.
leave the mounted bearings to cool for a while, then turn the vertical shaft counterclockwise to mount the upper bearings. When the bearings have completely cooled, lightly tap the inner rims of the bearings to confirm that they are mounted completely. Mount the lock washers, then tighten the bearing nut using a hook spanner. Set the claws of the lock washers in the position for the bearing nuts and bend the claws. Tap the upper bearing case uniformly using a plastic hammer. This completes the assembly of the vertical shaft. This is the procedure for disassembling the upper bearing housing. Loosen the six spring retainers. Remove the spring retainers, upper springs, and upper spring cases. Finally, remove the upper bearing sleeve. This completes disassembly of the upper bearing housing. Clean and inspect the parts and replace parts as necessary. In particular, inspect the dimensions of the upper springs and check for corrosion. This is the procedure for assembling the upper bearing housing. Replace parts as necessary. If you find any abnormalities in the upper springs, replace all six of them together. Mount the upper spring cases followed by the upper springs, then the upper spring retainers and tighten them uniformly. Finally, firmly tighten the upper spring retainers using a wrench. This completes the assembly of the upper bearing housing. This is the procedure for disassembling the horizontal shaft. Remove the three bolts holding the spiral gear along with the spring washers. Remove the spiral gear by tapping it with a plastic hammer, like this. Set 
Insert the horizontal shaft in a vise and loosen the socket set screws in collar two to release them. Set the bearing jack, disassembly jack, hexagonal bolt, push bolts and handle to release the bearings. At this point, to protect the engagement of the safety joint, insert a